I'm Yoki Jiro, and this is um perfect date. Um, there's a lot of visual novel dating simulators out there, and this is kind of a new spin on things. It's cats. So yeah, let's uh, ooh, how to play? Hmm. Let's see. You can progress the story by hitting either space or enter. Alternatively. Uh, you can progress by left clicking here. If you're feeling a little spicy, you can even progress the story by left clicking this icon. Hmm. Rest to restore your health. Running out of hearts may have consequences. Finish three research events will result in the completion of your contract. Ending your current chapters. Make sure you've done enough. Uh, okay. Anyways, let's, uh, let's, uh, pounce right in. Uh-huh, 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 okay. Meow. Um. <laughs> uh. <laughs> uh, okay. Let's just, uh, let's just, let's just go with it. Uh, let's see. Autosave notification. Um, I'm an angel and I accept it. I'm an angel and I re or I'm a devil and I reject. Let's go and accept it. Sure. Chapter one. Not sure how long I've, we've been sailing, but it feels like forever. I'm not feeling too well now, so it's a huge relief to hear the deck lad shout. Island approach. Make yourself ready, says Joe. I'm finally here. When I applied last month, I was just another broke student living off baked beans and didn't really think I had a chance of being accepted to a part to be part of the prestigious Cat Island research team. Yet here it is. The little black dot in the distance growing bigger by the second is the infamous Cat Island, the place I will call home for the next few months. My heart momentarily skips a beat. What if there's a what if there's been a mistake? What if they accepted someone else's application and accidentally sent the offer to me? I rummage about in my bag until I find the papers. You know, kind of have the uh, same thought sometimes. Like, why did I get hired? All right. So from the DPR, uh, DPR IDP Corporation, dear Yoki Jira, we are pleased to uh, be able to offer you the position of research assistant to Professor Popper. Uh, okay, at our research facility on Cat Island. The position will be for an initial period of eight weeks. Your contract will be sent separately. We are looking forward to working with you. Your sincerely, Professor Popper, PhD, BSCH Hans D. Uh, yeah, okay. No, no mistake. That's my name right there on the top left hand corner, Yoki Jiro. And there's his name at the bottom, the genius behind the whole operation. Professor Popper, science genius, and my new boss. I look up from my papers to see dry land rapidly approaching before us. It seems to be surrounded by a huge barrier of impenetrable black rocks, because cats love rocks. Uh, as we get closer, we're not slowing down, and I begin to worry that we're going to crash into them. Then, at the very last moment, we take a sharp turn to the left, and suddenly, we're sailing smoothly towards a jetty through an opening, opening in the rocks. I blow out the breath that I've been holding and break into a smile. Nicely done, Skipper. The ferryman comes from behind the steering wheel, ignoring my attempts at camaraderie, and shouts rather brusquely. I don't know what that word is. Take all your belongings. His name's Bob. Uh, we won't be back for days, so don't leave nothing you'll need, Bob says. Thank you. I smile weakly at the ferryman and his son when he brought his son with him and packed my bags. It was going to be like Jurassic Park, but with cats. Ready to disembark, we glide seamlessly up to the wooden jetty and the son leaps ashore to tie us off. He's greeted by a bulky man in a uniform who I take to be a security officer of some kind. Joe. Sir, caught you a mouse. And then he laughs loudly, as if though he said the funniest thing he's ever heard. It's very disconcerting. Concerning? The security guard remains surly and turns his attention to me. 
Let's be having you then, Zane Jones says. His picture uh, looks way different than his portrait. It's weird. He holds out his large hand, which I assume is an offer to help me off the boat, but as I reach out to take it, he snatches it away, throwing me off balance so that I almost fall over the side. What a great start. Howdy ho. ID card. Yeah, he looks completely different. Oh, I see. Of course. I reach out of my back pocket and hand over the, illuminate, or the laminated card I was given on the mainland. Uh, okay. Cat sipping on a margarita. He barely looks at it before striding off, grunting over his shoulder this way. Follow him down a dirt tr track path and get my proper first view of the island. It's beautiful, lush, and green. I'm already under its spell. It's so beautiful. After no more than a couple of minutes trekking, we're on or we're in base camp, which consists of assortment of tents and huts. Among them are two more solid-looking structures, one larger and one smaller. I presume these are the labs. The whole camp is moderate but functional. It reminds me of an army outpost. I'm struck by the lack of people. In fact, there's no one apart from an older woman sitting outside peeling a pile of potatoes. I smile and give her a nod, but just she just stares back at me. All right. I try not to get paranoid. Here. He stopped at the largest of tents, indicating that I should go inside. I feel rude just walking in, so I make my present known first. Uh hmm, hello. A firm but friendly voice calls out. Come, that's Professor Popper. What the shit? I walk in, and there he is, hunched over some documents. The great Professor Popper. Sir, it's an honor to meet you. Yes, yes, you must be Yokijiro. Come in, my, my, my dear. Glad to have you on board. Great, good journey? Well, long. Yes, indeed. You're rather tucked away here. Oh, shit. Let me offer you some refreshment. Water, coffee, something stronger, perhaps a whiskey. Mm -hmm. Fine, thank you. Just some water. If you have some, uh, it would be rude to let you drink whiskey on your own. I love a cup of tea if there's a pot on the go. Hmm. I don't really drink. I don't trust water from strangers. I'm fine, thank you. It's important to keep hydrated. The temperatures can rise to quite dizzying heights on this island. I'll bear that in mind, Professor. Thank you. Take you quite a while to find your way around and discover how it all works. So for today, I thought I would just get you kitted out and maybe introduce you to some of the locals. The cats, that is. I believe you already met most of the human locals. Oh, I've only met the ferryman and the security guard who brought me here. Yes, that's about it. And the lady outside... Ah, Miss Marigold. Her and her husband are the caretakers. A wonderful couple, the Marigolds. You'll meet them before too long. We're a tidy little family here, Yoki Jiro, and I'm uh, sure you'll fit in nicely. Thank you, sir. I hope so. Mm-hmm. Okay, so first things first, this is your basic kit. He begins going through a pile of things on his desk, explaining each of them in turn. This is your backpack. You can put everything in it. We'll be going, uh, we will be going on plenty of field trips, so it will be very useful. As will your own bot water bottle. Some disinfected hand spray. Ah, uh, these are very heavily uh, heavy duty reinforced gloves, which are essential when tagging cats in the wild. This is like Jurassic Park. Don't want any scratches from felines, don't we now? Do we? I suppose not. Uh, I shove each of the items in my new backpack as he gives them to me. Likewise, these goggles are to be brought along on field trips this lot here. He indicates to a small pile of what looks like laundry, his basic uniform, lab coats, math, er, math, masks, stethoscope, uh, stethoscope etc. I am terrible at these reading games. Portable first aid kit, camping knives with all tool attachments. Finally, and without doubt, most importantly, is that a Pokedex? This. He holds up something that looks a lot like a mobile phone, except it clearly isn't one. This is your catalog. Oh, catalog. Yes, the name comes from its earlier version. It was initially designed to record and store data on the cat, scan them, and detect their details. But as you see, we've come a long way since then. Now we can use it to communicate with the rest of the team. I've added everyone's contacts for you. Listen to music, take photos. There's even a pen that comes included... 
or that comes with it to insert microchips into the back of the cat's neck so you can keep track of them. What the shit? Very valuable piece of equipment, Yokichiro, and I need you to protect it above all else. Do you understand? No. He's looking directly in uh, me directly in the eye and clearly expects a response. Yes, sir. Of course I will look after it. Good. You'll get to know all the functions as you go along, but for now, I suggest you take a stroll out to see if we can't find a few friends to introduce you to so that we can try it out. He hands me the gadget. I feel a bit nervous taking charge of it, but also really keen to have a go. All right, let's uh, let's get some, uh, let's do some cats. Let's find some cats. Oh shit, cats. We head down to the beach, the professor explaining things as we go. The mixture of terrain on Cat Island is quite unique, even in a relatively small area. You'll find forests, mountains, jungles, beaches, woodlands, all of these uh, different geological and eco ecological zones in one place. It really is most remarkable. It certainly is! Uh, even in the lack of wildlife is in itself quite remarkable. Hmm. What do you mean, Professor? Well, put simply, there is a type of force field that surrounds the island, allowing nothing to enter. It's like the the, the uh, Wonder, Wonder Woman movie. You'll literally mean anything. Absolutely. No birds, fish, or any creature of any kind can penetrate it. Forgive me for my lack of intelligence on the subject, but uh, we're here. Cats? The professor lets out a disconcertingly loud laugh. Ah, I see what you mean. Well, there is, of course, one small break in this invisible wall, and that is where we built the jetty. But let's not get too bogged down in all this right now. What you need to know is that basically, the island is shaped like a peanut. He, okay, he has picked up a recent, er, blah, 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 blah. He has picked up a nearby stick and draws a simple map of the island. It is a fucking peanut. This is... Our end of the island is very well known to us now. We've been researching here for many years. The other end is not so familiar to us. We have encountered difficulties that have hindered our progress in the region. Mm hmm. Okay. Mm what type of difficulties, Professor? Well, we're not as sure as we like to be, but what we can tell you is that the environment has an adverse effect upon humans, inducing nausea at the very least. At the worst, fainting, migraines, possible nerve damage. Gosh, that sounds serious. As I say, it's best to keep away, but let's not go into all that now, my dear. You've had a long day for now. Let's just say that we refer, refer to that end, that far end, to the far end of the island as the danger zone within good, with good reason. I must ask you not to put yourself at risk by venturing beyond this mountain range here. He refers to the map once more, drawing a line past the center and putting an X through the end section. Hmm, <laughs> there are wild aggressive cats out there. I wouldn't want you getting too close to them. Unlike our lovely fellows closer to home. There's fucking genetically engineered dinosaur cats. You could feel it. Um, he's led me to the spot where a few cats are lounging about. What do you say we try our catalog now, Yokichiro? Yes, yes, yes. He stoops down and picks up one of the animals, a disgruntled looking cat who is sleeping under the shade of a palm tree. Holy. The cat lets out a di displeased mule, but doesn't struggle. It's a large body, billowing with large orange. Is that billowing? Gotta be billowing. Yeah. Uh, with a large, with large orange fur, just sort, uh, just sh sort of hangs in the professor's arm it's in lazy... Resignation. Would you like to have a... Um, okay. I find the on switch and somewhat timidly activate it. The gadget immediately comes to artificial life, emitting a boop, boop, boop sound with a red pulsating light. I'm going to scan us some cats. Yep, I select the app it's labeled cat scan and it loads instantly. There's no delay on this thing. Oh, it must be iPhone 10. The professor holds the cat towards me with his arms outstretched. I'm sure he said the scanning strip is implanted in the back of the neck somewhere, but it's difficult to find this one's necks. neck amidst the thick cloud of fur. I blow it to make a parting and press the catalog to its skin. It's a bit like scanning groceries in the supermarket where I used to work. That should do it. And he plops the marmalade. 
Oh, okay. I get it. Marmalade Tom back into the shade. Sure enough, upon withdrawal, I find the cat has been successfully scanned. Floofy butt. Mao. Floofy butt. Gender male. Age 10 years old. 4 months. Breed red tabby. Persian. Eye color red. Amazing. Clever, isn't it? A large part of our job here will to will be to tag and scan the cats, such as Mr. Fluffy Butt here. Floofy Butt, sorry. But it looks like you'll have no problem at all with that. Excellent work, Yokijiro. Thank you, sir. I can't wait to get started. Well, why don't you get a bit more practice with the catalog and scan the rest of them while you're here? These five spend a lot of time here together. They're like a little family, aren't ya? Oh yes, you are. This guy's a little weird. Uh, let's see, the professor seems to be a genuine cat lover like me. I think we're gonna get along great. Hmm. Okay, here goes. No help this time. The professor steps back. The first cat I approach is very friendly with a beautiful calico with beautiful calico markings. It comes towards me already purring. Meow. Trixie. Trixie is a female, about three years old and eight months, calico American short hair, and is green. Next is an elegant, sleek, hairless cat sitting gracefully in the sun. She doesn't pay much attention and allows me to scan her with minimal fuss. Snooty booty, meow. I'm not gonna remember the nows I make. Snooty booty is a female, um, about 11 years old in one month, a sphinx with the eyes of blue. Fourth cat approach is a noisy one. Meow, 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 meow. Mick Murphy. Mick Murphy is a male, six years, is a crossbreed, uh, a brown crossbreed, eye color of green. And finally, the one I deliberately put off to last. He's been sulking around the edges of the act, uh, of the activity, eyeing me suspiciously as though he could pounce at any moment. I laugh at myself already projecting personalities onto these animals. Holy shit, kibbles. He just goes because <laughs> he's a bitch cat. Kibbles, male, British long hair, three years old, green eyes. All done. I hope you enjoyed meeting some of the locals. The professor lets out a little laugh. I have a feeling you'll get to know them quite well here in time. Uh, that's probably enough for your first day, don't you think? It's quite a lot to take in. That's quite a lot of reading. Um, I'm suddenly exhausted and grateful to be heading back to camp. All right. Disco cat. It's a little late by the time I've unpacked and unsettled myself, but I want to write down in my journal. So I do that before I sleep. It's pretty chilly. So I pull up the sleeping bag up to my chin, but I feel pimple goosebumps bloom over my arms. I rub them, shivering, to warm myself up. It makes me smile that I get this inherent reaction to the cold. Oh. What will be keeping my new feline friends warm? Thinking of the cats in the island, the professor, my eyelids close. I float into the dream as the world drifts away. I'm trying to read these differently. Seeing how fast I can like rearrange the sentences. It's not working very well. I awake to a violent jolt that has me sitting upright. I'm not sure how long I've been asleep. I hear a rustling, a strange electronic noise. It's too dark and can't place everything. And it's sleepy. It's not working very well. Boop, boop, boop. Oh shit, it's the catalog. Scramble to my feet and follow the noise out of the tent. Looking around, my fears are confirmed. I catch the sight of the pulsing red light and go to the forest. Running as fast as I can, I snap into action. Dressed in my pajamas, barefooted, running at full speed, I run into the forest, into the dark of night. Crazy I be, must, I am. Okay. I need you to protect it above all else. So wait, a cat stole it? My legs are trembling beneath me. 
I could feel my heart beat heavy throughout my body. I wheezed in and out as I stopped because damn, I am out of shape. Must be really cold. Why am I so dizzy? I guess, uh, seems like I'm close to the danger zone. Holy shit, there's a bunch of cats in front of me. What am I supposed to do? I drop to my knees. Uh, okay, I open my eyes. The calico cat I scanned yesterday is in front of me. She drops the catalog at my feet. I passed out. Hello, can you hear me? Are you okay? I'm not doing voices. What is it? Don't be ridiculous, kibbles. It's a cumin, says Snooty Butt. Oh yeah, yuck. I can smell it now. Smells like a human, says kibbles. Like a dick. Oh, do be quiet, Snooty Butt snootily says. Are they alive? asks Trixie. Of course it's alive. It's breathing, you imbecile, replied Foodie Butt with his stupid looking face. Why isn't it moving? questioned Kibbles. Would you come on and give them some space? Move a back, ordered McMurphy. Yes, stand back. Move out of my way. Let me have a proper look, instructed Snooty Booty Hooty. I begin to come to the Sphinx cat is standing over me as I open my eyes. We stare at each other for a moment while I try to take in what's happening. Is this one defective? Snooty butt. Snooty butt booty butt <laughs> probes. I feel sick. I'm gonna puke. I say as I slowly begin to vomit. The cats watch me intently. Am I going insane? Ouch! My head! What is this chattering about? Snooty butt chatters about. They're scared and confused. Let me talk to them, Trixie exclaims, which is weird because it's saying that I'm a there. Um, human, are you alright? Trixie asks me. You, I remember, you took my catalog, I yell at the cat like a crazy person. Oh, but I give it back to you. It's in, it's back in your pocket now. I try to reach into my pocket and realize my hands are scratched to shreds. Ow, wow, 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 wow. What's wrong with my hands? I try to stand. Ow, 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 my feet. What's hap- I'm turned into a fucking cat, aren't I? Yeah, uh, I guess it's from all the climbing, Trixie says to me. I told you it wasn't ready for that floofy butt turns over to Trixie and says what's that ready for what confused it's anatomical anatomical structure is far too delicate fluffy butt was interrupted by kibbles who then says I tried to slow it down yeah floof you tried restraining a human who's that determined Trixie said with a uh a just a mean way of saying things i'm running out of descriptive words uh it was like a marge its um, anatomical structure didn't seem that delicate to me what the hell is a marge okay it was like what doing what confused you made your own way back to the beach mcmurphy the cat said okay but that doesn't explain why i'm talking to cats right now I show my bleeding hands. Ah, you crawled, Kara. Who? Kara, who's Kara? That's not my name. It's a term of endearment. Is this, it's an Irish thing. It's inappropriate. What? I crawled. You sure did, McMurphy. Said to my face, like a cat. I'm a freaking cat all the way from the mountains, like a bleeding mountain lion. Impressive, but why? Because you got the sickness. Oh, shit. Shh. Maybe you should sit down, human. We need to talk. Possibly a long talk. Tricky sa Trixie said with a look of disappointment. Or no, no. No, no, no. With a look of... Hmm. With a look... With a look of longing. I don't know. 
Talk, yes, that's right. Angrily, I said, confused. I say, since when can tax cats talk? Floofy, but being the asshole that he is, says, oh, for goodness sakes, since the dawn of time, how else do you think we communicate? McMurphy interjects, is like, hey man, stop splitting whiskers, Major. You know full well what the human is saying. I think the revelation here, Kara, is that you understand us. I'm saying, yeah, that too. Well, someone please explain what the hell is going on here. Trixie, wanting to explain everything, well, we don't fully understand everything, ourselves, at least not all the details of how it works. McMurphy, not knowing how things work, still wants to try and understand what's working, has to try and say something because that's how McMurphy is. I think being being stood in the forest surrounded by a bunch of talking cats is about as much detail as anybody would want. Snooty Butt, being snooty as ever, says I agree. And more to the point, we were rather hoping you would uh, be help to us. You're the scientist after all. McMurphy, uh, we would, uh, what we do know is that the clock has started ticking for you. Oh shit. Uh, confused, I uh, say, what do you mean? McMurphy then just goes and is just like, you know, whatever man. Well, there's no easy way to say this to you, Kara. You'll be catified, Kibbles. Rudely interrupts. I'll be what? Trixie, whether you help or not, you don't have a lot of time before. Snooty butt, being as snooty as ever, has to go and interrupt. Ahem, if I may, it would seem, and we are basing this on our experiences to date, that when a human manages to find themselves in what I believe you call the danger zone, they are vulnerable in ways that they were previously not. That is to say, Kibbles, you're screwed. Come on, Kibbles, you're not helping. Don't make me... He does, Kibbles, because he's way with his tongue out, so... Yeah. Whoa, mountain lion, there'll be no violence of any kind. Okie dokie. Forgive me for being a little panicked, kitty cats. Holy crap, this is going on forever. The vulnerability to which Snooty Butt was referring is, simply put, if you are bitten or scratched by an elder cat within the danger zone, you will begin a process of change that ultimately will result in a full feet line translation. Exposition, exposition, exposition. Kibbles whispers, catified, 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 catified. All right, catified. So basically, you're telling me I'm a were cat, not as bad as a were hog, but pretty bad. I look down, and amongst the scratches on my right hand were two distinct puncture marks. The reality of my situation descends on me like a cold mist on a warm summer day. Floofy butt. Basically, yeah, you're fucked. My head spinning. This is too much for me to take. Take a breath now, Kara. You're not looking so good. What? Have I started to change? I feel my head for years. Nothing. Fur? Cool. Well, got a lot of fur on my arm. Everything seems to be normal. McMurphy says no. I just meant you're looking a bit shaky. Understandably so. Could be all the, the energy drinks I've been drinking. I take a few deep, steady breaths and calm myself to say, um, so, how, what, why, what, what? Give me some data. What have you got so far? Look, we'll answer anything that we can, but the truth, the truth is we have more questions than answers ourselves. All right, you goddamn cat. So you have, uh, you need my help. So what would that entail? Get it? Ta no, that's the right word. It's not. It's not a, not a joke. Well, finding our friends would be a start. Cats on their island. They've gone missing. We don't know what's happening to them, but the body count is rising, and we've hit a wall. A wall of ignorance, maybe. 
Really? How many times have to tell you? Mr. Floofy Butt angrily said, because he's a dick. The Mueller's are to blame. Mueller's. Now, Floofy Butt, there's no need to be for name calling. Speaking of name calling, I'll remind you to call me Madam, Madam, Major, Madam. Wow. You know, I bet they've had a fling. Look, they can't help the way they are. It's lack of breeding, you know. Over breeding, if you ask me. Floofy butt. Had to go, say. Sorry, Major. Again, Mueller's? They're the Elder Cats, the uh, island's originals. They can't speak the way we can, hence the derogatory term, Mueller's. Probably because they meow. And how are they to blame exactly? Well, if I knew that, there wouldn't be a need for this elaborate kidnapping. It's hardly proven to be a roaring success after all. Look, Carl, could you? He's gonna say Carl every goddamn thing. I think I'm fucking annoyed. Shut up. Look, Carl. Well, we already know is uh is that we are no longer safe on this island. The elders who live within the danger zone are hostile towards us. Not sure why. It's always been that way. And now, because cats are taken anywhere, exposition, exposition. We expect the uh, occasional mishap. We all live in an undomesticated world here, after all. But lately, cats have been disappearing almost every day. Even the last human we catified. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You guys catified. So you catified somebody. You vampiric motherfucking cats. I'm sorry, what? Let's not open wounds, kibbles. Yes, onwards and upwards. First things first, this were cat thing. Catification. Damn, kibbles. Transition, Mr. Floofy Butt. Sorry, Major Floofy Butt. Whatever. How does it work? Time passes, then you transform into a cat. Nyah. What? It's a gradual process. It's different for everyone, but you won't just turn overnight. The clock is ticking, however. The first side effect of the transition is being able to understand us. Well, some of us. Not the others, obviously. Not all domestics, either. Then you have the whole height and sense thingy, the increased agility, the crazy body hair stuff. Let's not worry the Cuban with all the details just yet. I assume there's an antidote. I'm afraid you're going to be disappointed in that assumption. Hang on, you said there was someone else who you put in this position. Well, let's hope you're a better bet than they were. That's fucked up, they drowned in him, huh? Fortunately, you weren't able to discover an antidote or get our friends back. I know where their notes are, though. Really? Trade? Right. You help us, and I'll give you the progress reports. Hmm. Very, uh... I mean, I guess you're kind of screwed, or I'm kind of screwed, so I gotta help the kitties. Yeah, not really much of a choice. Afraid not. So it's uh, Hobson's choice. Don't really get a choice. Well, Hobson's choice is where, I guess, I guess in the way, like, I want, I want it in any color as long as it's black. So this isn't really Hobson's choice. This is more like, these cats are fucking me over. Okay, fine. So where do I start? Is there anything you'd like to tell me that helped me track down your missing friends? Well, no one listened to sense. Start with the Mueller's, and I'll eat half, I'll eat my hat. <sighs> you don't got a hat. Don't mind him, he's always set in his ways. We have a reason to believe the abductions take place in your part of the island. Yes, nowhere near the danger zone or the elders. Well, that doesn't make much sense, but I suppose nothing does around this place. Oh, shit's beeping. Oh, my alarm. I have to get to work. Run along now. We don't want any, uh... Oh, uh, make sure the reports are in your tent before this evening. Thanks. You're one in a million. I imagine those R's are far greater than that, given our new, given your new health status. Go! And thanks from all of us. So I think this is a weird plot that the cats are trying to, you know, do something. Okay, so we're back at the camp. I was able to limp there and I made it. I made some dirty ass pajamas. The stupid thing keeps beeping, but we're back. We made it. Got some type of magic. Don't know who it's from. Don't have any contacts. Only uh, Professor Popper was you know, programmed in it, but, uh, no contact information. It's one of those messages that you ignore. Are you sure it was wise to trust everyone? Anyone? No, I'm not really sure, but I'm stuck on an island with cats. What are you going to do, right? 
Who is this? I ask, of course. There's a lot you don't know. Think carefully about who you confide in. I don't really have a choice. Messages are gone and there's no record of them in my good old catalog, so, you know. I gotta get ready for work. Fuck it. I get dressed up, I look nice. Ten minutes late, whatever. Shit happens. Oh, hey. Doctor's here. Yeah, I did oversleep. I'm sorry. Well, you know. So much excitement. I'm on an island full of cats. What are you gonna do? I take punctuality very seriously. He cuts across my apology. Not to worry, it's perfectly understandable. You'll find I'm quite relaxed about most things as long as you get your work done. I don't mind what hours you keep. Thank you, sir. So, shall we get started? And we will. In the next round of Dragon Cats, they took you to an island and killed you and made you some weird werecat. Um, yeah. We'll continue with this game because it's kind of interesting. My goodness, what happened to you? Well, he looks at the scratches. I'm like, hey, he almost fell. I grabbed a bush. It's, you know, shit happens. Not a secret drinker, are you, Yokijiro? No, I'm a lightweight. This game knows me way too well. Just teasing, weirdo. We have to get those hands sorted out, though. It looks pretty nasty to me. Yep, got bit by a cat. I'm not going to tell anybody about it because, uh, you know, I want to keep secrets. Goes to the cabinet, takes out a bottle, puts some cotton wool on it, and begins tending my hands while he talks. I don't listen to most of what he says. All he does say is that he's going to have me look around the lab. Going to, you know, give me a few uh, choices about how I want to do things. So, uh, you know, I'm going to... Yeah, I'm still ignoring, you know, a lot of stuff. Don't really, you know, whatever. Wants me to help things, you know. Wants me to get my hands dirty. Make sure you explore the island. It's a beautiful place and there's a lot to see. Take some time to get to know the cats. Cool. Understand it's crucial to the research. There's plenty to do. And yeah, not to overwork yourself. Take, yep, yep, yep. Don't want to burn myself up. Sure, I'll do it. Just let me do it. Stop talking. That's the spirit. All right, he's done a really good job of my hands. They uh, they don't hurt too much, except for the whole you know in my blood and be turning you know coming a cat, but whatever. All right, and uh, we're moving on. I'm exhausted, making my way to the tent. So tired, but I see a package on my bed. It's the reports that kibbles. Hmm. Am I going to turn into a cat? Interesting. Alright, so time to resolve this because I don't want to be a cat. I mean, it would be kind of interesting to be a cat, but at the same time, I don't know. But we're talking to the cats, you know? They're going to prepare me. I'm going to gain their trust, you know? I'm going to just need to be a little bit more optimistic about this. And, and you know, we're, we're going we're gonna to do this, you know? Uh, it's, it's all I got. But right now, you know, I'm just going to kind of write in my journal. Because that's... I'm a scientist. I'm going to bed, though. Alright, well, waking up. You know, let's, let's, let's do this. I don't know what, uh, what should I do. I should probably investigate this cure thing, but let's... You know, uh, we should check out the lab. Let's check out the lab if, if the lab is off, you know, is there. Let's take a look. Oh man. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's go romance somebody. Because, you know. Wait, what the shit? Um. Uh. <laughs> um, this got weird. I'm splayed out. <laughs> Um, uh, 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 uh. I don't think I can, um, 
proceed with this game anymore. Shit's getting too weird. I'm hitting the quit button. Uh, yes, I'm done.